to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God. Indivisible. With liberty and justice for all. Guns. Self-defense. Conceal carry. This is the Patriot Defense Podcast. From the war room in Idaho's high desert, here's your host, Todd Eccles. It's Saturday night, and we find ourselves tucked away in the high desert of southern Idaho, Idaho uh, hiding out in the war room. It's just me and Mr. Kevin Tarver this evening. The only ones that made it. The only the only ones that made it. Uh, Mark had to go to Napa. He was doing something, and, uh, and Dean couldn't uh, couldn't escape his family this evening, which Man, is what's fine. Family, family's family, right? Family we, has their place. Family has their it's place. It's behind the podcast. I will, I will say that... Uh, Dean actually got a hold of me on my. I, I actually texted him today. Um, there is a store in yeah, town. Yeah, sign text. There was a store store in town, Washington Street Pond. I sent him a personal text on the side note, and they had a um, H and R. Uh, what's it called? H and R Buffalo lever action rifle in forty five seventy, three hundred and fifty dollars. So did he get it? Oh, I was going to get it. I didn't. I should have. That would have been fun. Just kind of having one of those weird cowboy rifles, you know. Hey, I got one. I got I got some cowboy guns that uh, I got a Colt. Uh, what do you call it? The uh, Peacemaker replica, one of those Italian jobs, and uh, got the Evil Roy model. Oh yeah. Oh, it's, it's sweet, but it's just it's just to play with. Have you ever you ever seen a you ever shot a forty five seventy rifle though? No. I, oh. I, I have you ever have. seen a round? Yeah. Uh, freaking uh, Dean's got one, and his is all like silver and and gray. It's freaking sweet. I'm pretty sure I planked off a few rounds on one, but I'm n- I only shot it one time. Uh, Frost has one. Yeah, uh, and yeah, we they're fun. Yeah, he's. I'm like, dude, that's a big old. That's a lot of bullet you got there. There's another one. It was more money that I could have picked up in uh, 44 mag, which would have been kind of fun too. I love a 44. Yeah, I don't know. Forty five seventy is a lot of freaking fun. That's a, that's a, that's a so lot of... Dean. Uh, Dean used to have a uh, until we shoot. We, I think I took another friend with us and he shot it. <laughs> but he used to have a crony a chronograph that we used to shoot. He used to shoot his reloads through just so he could kind of see what he had going right. on. Because he Dean doesn't. I don't think Dean buys ammo. He just reloads everything. Really. And uh, so we used to. My buddy was shooting. And he shot through the. He shot right through the freaking chronograph. <laughs> <laughs> it was really kind of funny. Um, so I haven't seen the chronograph since. So either it doesn't work or he's fixed it and he just doesn't want to get it out to play with when I'm around. So I don't reload. Right. How many rounds can you get out of a reload? Oh, you ain't gonna get but a few rounds out of that brass. Right? It depends. If you shoot if it's handguns, you're gonna get a ton. Out of the brass? Yeah. If it's just handguns, you just and you're just loading like light load. Right. If it's um if it's a rifle, you want to inspect your brass with a handgun too. But if it's a rifle, uh, I, it just depends on the caliber and how hot you load them. And did you pick it up? I mean, you don't know exactly how many rounds have gone through. So is it something you picked up at the range? Right. You know, on the ground. So well, some people will go, you know, four or five loads. It just depends. It's, I'm not I, I'm not a rifle reloader, dude. I, I have done it. Not a bunch. I can't find a decent round in 45 long coat. They're all... Have you ever shot any of them? Yeah, I they're think they're all so. like cowboy rounds. Right. They're pink, 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 pink. Like, so, dude, that's a big old, that's a big old round. I want some explosion happening. If you want Dean, Dean will load them for you. He might blow my gun up. No, no, because Dean's really conservative. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm the guy that will blow your gun up. Okay, because Dean actually, when he reloads, uh, Dean, let me just check this over here. Oh, Philip wants a lever action. Um. Uh, Dean uh, reloads and he looks at the book. I reload. I go online and I, <laughs> I read. I read like like reloading forums. Right. And I'll look around and someone will say, "Oh yeah, I tried this recipe in my nine millimeter. <laughs> <laughs> How do I use this powder? I use this many grains. Give it a whirl." So I'll get on there and do that. And Dean's really surprised to have all my fingers because you're really that's you're supposed to go to a book like published data, not yeah. an internet internet low. So Dean has a real hard time shooting any of my ammo that I reload. It scares him. I've never had a problem. Not yet. Not yet. I haven't shot my reloads in quite a long time, though. I've never reloaded. People get on to me because wherever I go, I leave brass everywhere, and they're like, 
Oh shit, pick that up. Yeah, they man, you got it. Man, I ain't picking that up. I'm just leaving it there. Look at um uh look at there's a big tub of lead over there. You see that big tub? No, actually that's not that's not lead. That's that's brass. But I got a huge tub in the other room's filled full of lead. I actually cast my own bullets too. Wow. And I powder coat them. I haven't done it for a few years, but okay. I used to get really intense in the wintertime and do it. Now that I got this nice little room. Well, you don't. <laughs> I, do, I don't do now it. Now that you have the space and the I'd time rather, in the room. I'd rather melt that lead down in my garage and get cancer than I would this nice big room. Yeah, that's a good plan, man. <laughs> yeah, I never reload anything. It's That's too much work. Well, I've got everything set up over here, kind of set up. I got busy doing other stuff. And ammo, that's when ammo prices were so high. Ammo has gotten so much cheaper now. Yeah. That yeah. it's just, I just buy it. If I can go buy, if I can buy 9 millimeter for 15 cents a round, I'm going to go buy it for 15 cents a round. I mean, that's cheap, you know, and I'll buy it in two or 3,000 round, you know, orders. Yeah, buy in bulk and it gets cheap. And I, I still have everything I need to reload. I got a ton of brass, obviously. That those shelves over there are just packed full of powder, but I just got to sit down and look into it again. I was getting close to reloading during the last administration, man. They did. You couldn't find ammo. Yeah. Any ammo. Well, you couldn't find powder. Good grief. You couldn't find anything. So if you went and, and you found primers, it's like, buy the primers, buy the primers. And you go to these police stores, like these Sportsman's Warehouse, and they would like, okay, so many primers per person per purchase. That's ridiculous. So much powder per, per person per purchase. They were down to the point of when the firearms were scarce that you couldn't put any firearms on layaway. And you could only buy like one semi-automatic handgun at a, at a time type of thing. Yeah, I know. Stupid. Yeah, it is stupid. But, but I mean, where did they all go? Where did they, I mean. People bought them. And, and actually, my buddy uh, Forrest, he runs at the Washington Street Pond. And he says occasionally he'll see he'll, certain times a year when people need the money, all these guns that they bought will come in. He goes, they're like brand new. And people bring him to the pawn shop and want money on him and try to sell him off to him or whatever because they got to pay off a credit card bill or they got to do this or that or I I bought this and I never shot it you know people bringing in multiple ARs or handguns or just even weird calibers because you knew you were buying guns in too you'd go in and yeah it was just crazy calibers yeah, it was there was nothing on the shelves that's basically why I bought that Glock that one time yeah. It, it was the only thing left. Pretty much, you're getting desperate. I mean, I, I, yeah, pretty much. You just go in and buy it to buy it. I mean, that's what I was doing. Yeah, it was crazy though. I don't understand. That. I do have stuff, not guns. I do have stuff I bought that I've never used. A bunch of thirty round mags that went on sale. That before they limit them at Sportsman's Warehouse, I went in there and bought like fifteen of the damn things. <laughs> bunch of th- bunch of thirty round P mags. Yeah, yeah. I bought a bunch of those too. I got they're still in the plastic. I remember. <laughs> I, yeah, I remember. I was. Uh, I was in there with my um, I, my wife had said I could hey, go buy these or whatever. So I went in there, and I knew that they were there, and I got permission or whatever. And you know, I had to find out how much money we had and the whatever. And so I went down the aisle, and they're there. And I'd come back, and I was getting ready to get them. And some guy was standing there with his wife, and you could tell he was trying to convince her he needed he needed these. And uh, he's like, "There's so many here. Just just let me buy them. Come on, it'll be okay." And he's explaining why he needed them and stuff. And she's like, "Well." I don't know. And she's about ready, I think, give him the green light. And I was like, excuse me. And I reached over there and took everything off the freaking rack and walked up to the <laughs> register with it. It was fantastic. That guy, he just he just gave me the evil the evil glare. Yeah, I would too. I'm like, you could share some of them. No, but they were being indecisive. Yeah, yeah. You grab them, then talk, them, talk your wife into it. So Get them in your hand. There was a gal there that used to, she passed away, unfortunately, but she used to manage that the gun section over there. Uh-huh. And uh, I was looking for powder and powder was really, really scarce. And I show, <laughs> I was over there talking to a buddy of mine. He worked in the fishing department. And I, so I walked in there and we were near the powder and I said, Hey, I want to go check this powder. They're getting ready to like put some powder out or something. I walked over there and the one gal was putting it out. I reached up and took it out of her, <laughs> took it out of her hand. She was not impressed. I was like, as soon as it hits the shelf, someone's going to freaking take it. So I just sat there and waited till they stocked the damn shelves and took what I wanted. I wonder why she got upset about that. I just, you see, that's the kind of person she was. But okay. I, uh, I'd go in there not, not, not expecting to spend a dime, and I'd leave there with whatever they have that day, powder, primers, whatever. It was crazy. It was crazy. You were buying, I, I almost 
the ARs were gone. Oh yeah. And they were, I bought a couple of them as backup, you know, $500 jobs, yeah. you know, months before years before the oh, yeah. craziness, never fired them. They're just backups. And, uh, they were going up so high that I, I was close to bring them. I almost did. But of course I was doing the same thing everybody else was doing. Sure. Hoarding it. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, I got tons of powder, tons of primers over there. I've got like four 80% unfinished AR lowers just because I got a good deal <laughs> on them. I just bought them. No serial numbers, buddy. You want to finish them? Let's talk off camera. <laughs> there you go. But uh, no, it's yeah. So I got my pile of stuff and I've just kind of been shooting the ammo up as I go. But Here's the thing. That's that's not the time to buy ammo. Time to buy ammo is now. Yeah. When yeah. prices are low and there's no panic, no one's jacking up the prices. I mean, you know, you know how many carts, and I'm sure you had the same thing. You'd go online. Oh. You know how many carts I had full of stuff that I'd ordered that were back order, and I was just waiting for them to like call me for the okay to like charge my credit card or whatever. I had so much stuff on there. Refresh, 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 refresh. I hated that because you'd have it all checked out and ready to go, and a lot of them wouldn't say. I don't know if they were just selling out that fast or what. Right. You go to check out, it's it's there. You go to check out, it's not there. It's on back order. Yeah. I'm like, dude. So the um uh the night of the election, okay. Right. The night of the election, I'm sitting there. Literally I stayed I took like the day off work the next day. This mm-hmm. is how crazy it got for me. I took the day off work. So I was working at uh, uh Glanbia and I stayed up to find the results and I'm literally sitting there with my laptop on my lap. With my card number, everything put in, going okay, okay. I gotta, I gotta find out who won. I gotta find out who our new, who our new POTUS is. Just wait, just wait. Okay, click, click, click. Bye, bye, bye. bye. <laughs> and this was for what election? Oh, this is uh, when Obama went in. Oh, the first time he went. Yeah, and it just stuff just went like that. I mean, it was quick. I mean, you're literally bye, bye, bye. Refresh, refresh. Bye, bye, bye. Refresh, refresh. <laughs> And then everything was just like within like five minutes, everything was popping up back order, back order, back order, Good back order. Thing. Unavailable, unavailable, unavailable. I'm like, holy crap. It was crazy. It was a crazy time. They got a bunch of my money. I know that. Well, you had a lot of firearm companies expand and everything, and now they're going out of business. That's back when you couldn't get twenty two shells hardly. Those people made me so angry. Oh, people were buying so many twenty two shells. You'd find them on eBay, $100 for a box. I'm like, yeah. are you out of your mind? The thing I saw with that, though, is when you couldn't find it, even the good companies were start when they started to mass I and mean, really started to actually start to see some more hit the market. Right. They were so pressured, and I think that they were so pressured at getting more and more out to the people to buy that their quality and their crapper. And I was having people bring 22s to shoot for my class. Right. And all the really good stuff, like the CCI, the mini mags, all the good. Well, it w- it wouldn't even cycle the freaking gun. I mean, the quality went into the trash. They probably didn't have the powder. They were cutting the powder in half. <laughs> probably, probably <laughs> right. <laughs> so, uh, anyhow, we could talk for a long time on how much money I think you and me both have spent. Too much. Yeah. Can't get it back. You can't get it back. It's too much, but not enough. I do it again. Unfortunately, now there's other things that I'm 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 looking at. I'm eyeballing stuff. I'm, what are you eyeballing? Maybe a VP9. Ooh, sweet! I just took a shooting class. Yeah, so, uh, that was my Second Amendment related activity. Your Second Amendment related activity. Tarver showed up because it'd been because you were in what the prison security or yeah. whatever it was for a long time. Yeah, and so back then you'd shoot all the time, right? Yeah, some. Were you shooting revolvers or some? What guns were you shooting back then? Oh, we had crap. Wait. Oh man! What were you shooting when I first started? I'm gonna sound like a dinosaur. We sh- were shooting Ithaca shotguns uh, that were. Whew, I mean, were they single shots? <laughs> no. Some of them were. They weren't designed that way, right? But you had to shoot one, break it down, reload it, <laughs> shoot it again. Uh, yeah, they were some. Whew, yeah, we shot 38 uh, revolvers. Revolvers. And, Shotguns. The shotgun I had had a nail holding the stock together. I mean, oh. these are firing range weapons. They were garbage. So, do, were you ever employed by them when you moved up to semi autos? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what semi auto did you move into? We, depending on what, if you were on a team, you could get an MP5, but which was sweet, right? Because uh, you, it's automatic, <laughs> right, right, and it's fun to play with. 
but everybody else was mini 14s. What stuff. about what about handguns? Did you ever move up past the revolvers? It Just, was those were mostly trip guys that used the handguns, right? And most of them would just buy their own. Oh, really? And they didn't yeah. really care as long as they could pass. Nah. Did you guys have to pass a proficient, proficiency test? It's pretty low marks. Pretty pretty cake? Yeah. Can you hit the paper? I can hit the paper. It's like, it's a six-foot paper. <laughs> it's a person. <laughs> you hit it. You're in the black. All right, good to go. They're locked down. Just slow them down a little bit. Yeah, well, if if literally, if you hit the paper, you're okay. And who can't hit the paper? You got I mean, real bad. You, bad. You just tear gassed them, right? Well, just a big riot. Just tear gassed the freaking. They ain't going nowhere. Well, it depends on what situation you're in. What if you're in the prison itself? It's a right. Yeah, you got. You have things. Uh, now you have robots that'll go in there and they'll tear gas everything. You don't have to do anything. So, did you work on the inside or the outside or both? Or I was mainly in cell blocks. Oh wow, you were you were, were, were rough. Yeah. Did you ever get entangled with any of them? <laughs> you know, I'm looking for a story here. You know that, right? Yeah. People, get... The people want to hear a story. Well, I got into a few. Yeah. Well, tell you can't just tell us that. It's it's it, it was it was a rough uh, rough area. Let's just say that. Is it rough? Yeah, it was. It was daily stuff, man. It was daily confrontations. You were always, always. Someone getting shivved? No, not too much of that, but it was always a fight. It was always restraining people. It was always... Uh, Did you ever shoot anyone with a beanbag? No, but we had the... Uh, rubber bullets? We had we had the grenades for those. The oh, Rubber really? grenades. And what is that? Shoot with it. So the grenades hit and shoot out little rubber, rubber balls. Pills. Did you get to use them on people? <laughs> we didn't. Because every the hell? time, what kind every, of fun? That was a horrible job. <laughs> every time we broke them out, everybody said, calm down. Everyone calmed down. Oh, no yeah. one liked them, huh? Yeah, hey, it was it was calm time. Well, pretty much you have your steps to take, and that was right. an extreme step. Uh, Trying to de-escalate before you get yeah, to the good stuff. You got to justify that, and right. Uh, if we could have got everything's tagged out. Right. I mean, if we could have got something to play with, we would have fragged each other. We <laughs> could have just thrown those grenades and uh, played with them. But everything's so tagged out. Everything's right. got a number. You got to break a tag to get to it. Uh, everything. I understand. God. And every the first step is the electronic capture shield. It's right. uh, basically a U-shaped plexiglass that you can pin people, and it's got electricity going through. Holy shit! Yeah. Dude. Pin some up, and it makes a lot of noise. So when you break that out, and you, did you get to use it on somebody? Oh, we played with it. We we shot each other with. Oh, it. <laughs> good Lord. <laughs> they that started out not being locked down, and it they, ended up somebody somebody got mad, somebody lost an eye. It's all fun till somebody loses an eye. Well, the you know somebody it's got shoots a, an eye out. <laughs> it's got like a six month battery on it, and they'd have to test it all oh, the time, crap. and the battery was lasting like two weeks. So they're like, you guys are playing with this. Stop. So they took it from us and locked it up, too. God, they're no fun, man. No, no, they weren't. Well, uh, Philip just said on here on uh, Facebook Live, he's following. He says he's joining the local federal detention center in a week. Ooh. So are they locking you up, Philip, or are you getting employed there? <laughs> is that by choice? <laughs> is, that, is that by choice or, or uh, involuntary? I hope it's a camp. If you get to go to a camp, that's nice. Okay. Yeah, minimum security. Oh, there you go. Sweet. No fences. All the movie stars? Yeah, stuff like that. People with real bad attitudes. So, the well, more you get locked down, actually the better attitude to have. Yeah. Because the ones in camps don't actually experience prison. They just... Monitor, being, they're being monitored. Yeah, they're detained. They're detained. It's not prison. It's like... My tax dollars going to waste. Yeah, is yeah. what that is. Just holding them. Just hold. <laughs> if they're not that, if they're no more of a threat than that, let them go. Exactly. So anyhow, you hadn't you 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 got guns, but you you said something earlier, and I'm not trying to pull you out here. I don't want you know. I don't want to know your secret. You said you're more of a a collector, not a shooter. Unfortunately, because I I don't have the time, but 
on the flip side of that, I don't make the time. Well, for a while there, too. I mean, and you still are a single dad. You're a single dad. You're trying to work, provide, yeah. take care of your kid, worry about school, worry about groceries and everything else. And you just got, and you were down in California for part of that. So, yeah. That's the, that's the shits. Yeah. You can't buy a decent weapon in California. So, anyhow, so you're just starting to maybe get back into some shooting, right? Right, right. Uh, well, uh, Came out and had you tweak my shooting, and basically, over the... You said tweak, not twerked. Okay, yeah. We weren't, we weren't twerking, we no. were tweaking. You don't want to see we that. We weren't tweaking. Actually, we weren't tweaking either. Okay. I was adjusting his shooting. Okay. Fine-tuning your There shooting. you go. Sorry. Okay. So as long as we not uh, offending people. <laughs> That's right. Uh, yeah, well, you, you know, you get... Like I said, I was always a... We always had shooting competitions competing against each other right down south that's we just and we could hit if you could see it i could hit it you could right. hit anything and over the years you get to where you don't shoot anymore and you don't practice anymore and you just feel like yeah i can shoot having you watch over my shooting and right. fine tune some things and what was it, 20 minutes? Yeah, it didn't take long. It dialed in real fast. And, and I that, just, that's like six rounds at a time. Yeah, need to work on the basics again and go back to what I used to do. And it, you get out of practice and you do. It just went bad. Oh, it does. It, I, mean, I see that with my kids. So my oldest daughter liked to go when she was still living at home and not married. Uh, she liked to go shooting with me a bunch. Right. And uh, then she got into high school and she got into boys and all that crap. And so she never wanted to go to shooting with me. So about a, even six months had gone by. And she was to the point, she was shooting pretty well. She had a certain gun she liked, my uh, XDM 9mm 3.8. She loved that gun. And she goes, hey, Dad, I want to go shooting with you. If you're going to go, I want to go. So she went out with me. I handed her to the gun, and she like looked at it like she had no idea what to do with it. And it, it just all kind of gone away. So it's a skill that over time will will degrade if you don't use it. You'll lose that muscle memory. And I... I tell I feel like a broken record, but I tell everyone, especially people that take my class, five rounds, ten rounds, twenty rounds, hundred rounds is better, fifty rounds is good. As many rounds as you can, if you're depending on that firearm to save your life and the life of your loved ones, you need to know how to use it. You need to be proficient at it. So that's just keep keep shooting. Once you once you know what you're doing and you keep practicing that muscle memory, it'll be there. But it goes away. Well, we used to every family get together, every family holiday. Christmas, Thanksgiving, whatever we did, crawfish bowl, anytime people got together, everybody brought guns and we went and shot. Right. You know, we would shoot, everybody bring a couple hundred rounds and two or three of your favorite guns and we'd just all shoot alligators, (laughs) cans. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, we did a lot of shooting. And once I moved away from family, we don't have family get togethers, that kind of died. Right. All right. When are we going to go shoot? It turns into. You, you got a range right here beside you, which is nice. But other right. than that, if you don't, it kind of turns into a chore. We got to schedule time for this. We got to go out there. Gotta and then we got to clean guns. And, and you got to clean clean guns. What's that? It's a foreign I, concept to me. I just basically take the CLR, yeah, and shoot in it. Shoot it until it cut, starts coming out clear, and just kind of shake it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> just keep spraying it until it's, it's no longer black. You know, you're only out. supposed to shake it twice, right? Okay, <laughs> but. but no, it's a, it is. I mean, I've done stuff together as a family where we get together and go shoot. And after a while, it that guy doesn't show up or your brother doesn't show up, and it just kind of falls apart. But and you get busy. And- I and I'm and I'll be honest with you. I teach this stuff. I have a range fifty yards from my front door. It's still hard for me to come out and and shoot. I'll be honest with you. you most people, I'll be out here every night. I bet you you would. It's wouldn't. fun to shoot with people. It's it's, it's hard to shoot by yourself. It, it is. It's not fun and like when we had family get togethers it was a competition too so you had bragging rights and you got the smack talk so you better bring your a game yeah and that was that's been 20 years so now it's you're gonna get all tuned up and you're gonna go back home for a family reunion and you guys will go you guys will go at it and you'll be all set man they're all old they can't see anything they can't see anything anymore they can't see anything Hey, you missed it. You weren't here last week, were you? No. Uh, we had a gentleman by the name of Tori Harvey. He joined us. 
and came on. And his friend, Zach Con- or Zane, sorry, Zane, Zane Hines, uh, he lives in South Carolina. He's listening now. So the Patriot defense reach has grown even more. I'd like to visit South Carolina. Let's let's connect there. Let's. <laughs> you heard it here, Zane. He wants he wants to connect some yeah, somehow. I just need a couch, man. Well, is that before or after our master plan we're putting into play? It have going, to be before because once we get to Alaska, yeah, ain't no me, coming me back. and Tarver, we got a ten year plan. We're going to Alaska, and we're never going to be seen from or heard from again. Well, we may do a podcast up there. Yeah, but we we're gonna be we're gonna be we're gonna grow big beards and we're gonna freaking like trap marmots and stuff be like mad trappers be like, oh, be like the mad <laughs> trapper there you go and be little house on the little house on the tundra have to get you a revolver oh shit yeah i'm gonna yeah. have to i'm gonna have to but hey you can't shoot no, you can't shoot a bear with a nine millimeter uh watch me <laughs> it's all about shot placement yeah. my friend i tell you what if you take the time to aim and steady your shot i'd be very much impressed well, I tried to impress you today because I was going to shoot that damn DB9. I'm impressed that you even shot it. You have to be impressed that I shot it, and I actually held a group. Yeah. But that that thing inherently shoots low. That's just... It's not, it's not, real, it's not a real gun. It's... I mean, what does that thing weigh? It weighs nothing. It's... I don't ounces. know. Ounces. We're talking ounces. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, we're talking ounces. I think, each round that goes out of it significantly, significantly changes the weight of the. <laughs> what is that like a six round? Yeah. So I think, I think you six. put the six rounds in there. You probably, that's probably six rounds. Probably weighs more than that gun. Yeah. But, it don't uh, weigh anything. Anyhow, I told Tarver that in three shots I get it on the bullseye. Fortunately, any other gun I picked up, I probably could do that because I've done that with forty-four mags. I've done it with forty-four specials. I've done it. You name it. Picked up a gun I don't know, and this one was just horrific. Yeah, it's not there. You're not gonna do it. And I knew it would be bad, but I thought I could. I thought I could wrangle it, <laughs> wrangle it in. If you did, I would. I, I I don't know what I'd do. I'd have to. I I know you shoot my shooting. I tried. You helped. You helped me a lot. It, it it helped a lot. But if if you could hit a bullseye with that DB nine, I would probably just quit and sell them. I'm like, that's it. I quit. Oh, There's man. no fixing me because. Did part do you think I was going to get it? Huh? Did part do you think I'd hit it? No. Nope. <laughs> no. And if you did, I would have to say, I'm not a little off. I'm horrible because because uh. I can't hit with the thing. And uh, it took me a few shots. I finally got it, but I was compensating for. Yeah. The yeah. thing is, is the grip is so even sh- at the moon. <laughs> the thing is, the thing is so the grip is so short and it's so slick. It's There's, if you're gonna have a gun that small with that short of a grip, you've got to have freaking sandpaper on it or something. You've got to have grip tape on it because the thing moves. It's a gut gun. It's, it is. It's it's if it's any more distance than me reaching out to you, it better have a different. It's like gun. a modern day Derringer with six rounds. Yeah. I have a Derringer that will probably shoot better than that. I think you brought a little... I got it in the car. Yeah. We should have got that out and shot that for a little while. Um, we we'll can't. Yeah, we'll do it next time. I put all my, I'll put all my crap away already. Okay. I've yeah. already been out there. I had a class this morning. This is how it starts. I know. I, nah, I don't want to go back out. <laughs> I know. Well, if you could hear, I don't know if my nose is already getting stuffy, man. This freaking wind and my allergies is kicking my butt. I think this big... 40 acre cornfield next to my house is probably uh, there's lots of pollen blowing off of it. I'm thinking. Have they started harvesting yet? Not the corn. They won't harvest the corn for another month, probably. Two, two to four weeks, depending on what corn it is. That's so cliche. Yes, you're in Idaho and got a cornfield beside you. Well, they're they're starting to dig everything else. Well, they just bailed this hay too. That my allergies are anyhow. No one wants to hear about my damn allergies. No. But I had a class this morning, and just a guy. Uh, he just started. He said he woke up one day. He didn't have any guns. Within a week, he had four guns. Uh, That's how it starts. Yeah, just decided to go buy them and wanted to, wanted to take a class. And he uh, he would when he when I talked to him, he wouldn't give me a. He wouldn't give me uh, really for sure exactly how, how how am I shooting, what do I need. Because I don't know what I need. Just see if I'm doing anything glaringly wrong and right. f- fix it. You know, and we'll go from there. 
the dude came and he had me convinced he wasn't shooting real well and you saw his freaking target yeah, out yeah, there it's crazy you could stick your freaking fist through the hole that he chewed out it was awesome he did he did a great job i just had to tweak a couple of things just like with you though i just had to tweak a couple of things with you and you were you're back on you were good to go yeah but it's good to have that i mean people especially as you get older and you've always shot well you're like i don't need a class come get a class right it it's it's so we we were talking about nice. people spending a lot of money on on ammo right some people would benefit more ammo and the, and the latest gun some people would benefit more from maybe just having one gun and spending a little bit of that money sometimes on a class yeah and learning how to shoot what do they say beware of the man with one with one gun because he probably knows how to use it you ever heard that saying no <laughs> oh shit i just made it up see i'm that good no we laughed at the man with one gun. You only got one gun. Exactly. Good grief. You got one for every each day of the week. What do you what do you what do you carry with your dress clothes? What do you carry to church? Yeah. You gotta have your Sunday go to church gun. Yeah, I do. Okay. It's a little shield. <laughs> you gotta have different guns. You do. Well, problem with me is I'm looking for the perfect gun. And I've never found it. There's always something that's a little off. Something that I don't like. You're gonna like it. Something you, here, something there. It's because you haven't bought your your uh, you haven't bought your VP9 yet. It's possible. And, and you I'm know a- what? I'm I'm about ready to get I'm about ready to get my gun. <laughs> you know where I'm going with this, right? Yeah, yeah. I I, I, I know where you, what you're gonna say. I don't believe you're gonna get it. It's dude. They had an article. Did you see the article? Did you I see? saw the text and it's, I it's, was crazy busy and didn't it, know. the guy was talking about it. Rob Pincus was talking about the, his, some guns. And people were asking, he showed the PD-10s again. See, I should wait on the VP-9 and, then. I and, shouldn't buy it. And he said, no, these are going to be different guns. Okay. You, you need two guns. So he said, someone said, hey, when's it going to be released? He said, soon. I'm feeling good about I've heard that uh, numerous times. How long has he been saying soon? I'm feeling really good about this one. Okay. It's been long enough that he's gotta be, it's got to be coming out soon. Okay, so what's the difference? What What's the... I've I know this is your gun, but I hadn't really looked up at oh, okay. too much PD, about it. PD ten. It's okay. a it's a single it's supposed to be everything a concealed carry holder wants. Okay. It was designed by Rob Pincus and Avidity or he designed it with Avidity Arms. He's gonna manufacture it and everything. So what it is is a single stack. It's a nine millimeter. It's supposed to be not a subcompact, but kind of a decent, you know, compact size, nice for carrying, nice for for appendix carry. Takes uh, 1911 mags. Um, it's got uh, oh, what kind of sights are they? They're, they're the angled sights, right? So, so you can rack them off your shoe and and you know stuff like that. It's just supposed to be perfect for concealed carry. Uh, striker fired. Everything's supposed to be just awesome. And what caliber is it? Nine millimeter only. Wow. I think I'd rather get the VP10. VP9. VP9. I mean. Well, you wait. You wait till you see my PD tens. I'm gonna buy two. <laughs> I want a full wide. size. That I can something full size. I'm trying. That's what I'm wanting to find now. I bought a lot of compacts and a lot of small firearms, trying to find right the good one to carry. And I just stopped at the shield, and I'm like, that's good enough. So I'm okay with that. But I want right. a full size now. That I love that. Uh, 45, that, uh, FN, yeah, was an FMP tactical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just, um, come on, it's just so big. It's, it's pretty big, too big. I proved that you can, I proved that you can appendix carry a Desert Eagle. Yeah, 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 kind of if you want it to. If you just can't do the bird, but who does burpees with a Desert Eagle, right? No, you just can't do that. Oh, well, I'm going to cut in here. Philip wanted to know what the capacity on the PD 10 was. I think it's, Actually, 10 rounds is what I think it is. Hmm. So it's a little more than a smaller gun, but it's not as big as because it is a single stack. Is it but, about the size of a shield? Uh, it's gonna it's bigger than a shield. And it's going to be thin because it's single stack. But it's not going to be as big as, let's say, like a G19, I don't think. So it's kind of getting that perfect, that perfect in-between. It's going to feel so good in my freaking hand. I know I'll get the chance to see it. Without having to purchase it, yes, you will. As soon as it comes out, I know you'll have one. I check daily, sometimes twice a day, see if there's any new news that pops up on it. Good grief! I want this damn gun. He's been talking about it for three years. That's ridiculous. He shouldn't even talk about it if it's going to be three years. But you know what? He's still got people asking about it. 
So he put on Facebook, he was this is a couple of weeks ago. Someone's like, I'm so sick, I went and bought another gun and yeah, I'm sick of waiting. You shouldn't have done this. And and all he responds down below was, Yeah, you're still here. <laughs> <laughs> so he made his point, you know. He wants it to be perfect, I guess. I I don't freaking know. I love it. And I haven't even shot it, and I love the depth. God, I don't I know it, what he's waiting on. I though. freaking hope it performs. I would look like an asshole. Well, he can't. He, he, there's no excuse for it not to be flawless with all this time. It's ridiculous. Right. I think I, mean, I think part of it was just getting the, everything to feed because it's just a, kind of a smaller compact using 1911 mags, and he wanted to make sure. I think the gun functions well, but he wanted to make sure um, the ramp uh, design and everything functioned with like every single you know, as many rounds, as many hollow point self defense rounds as you could get. You think they would have that nailed down by now? I don't know, man. I I don't know. I'm gonna buy it. And it's supposed to be right around four to five hundred dollars, so real reasonable for a firearm. Yeah, that's nice. Real affordable. So I'm gonna buy it. I'm gonna Affinity, buy it. huh? Avidity arms. Avidity. Av- avidity. Have you seen a picture of it even? I don't remember. I don't. Good lord! Do you ever see the text messages I send out? I do, but uh, some... we do get like a weekly PD ten report. Oh, sometimes I'm busy. And... I know sometimes our little our little texting group goes freaking dark. Yeah, it's not really a group. <laughs> <laughs> Just kind of random text that pop yeah, in. They don't. They don't. I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes I chip in and I'm like, maybe I'm bothering people. Maybe I need to leave them alone. Maybe so, I'm harassing them. No, we don't care. Just send them, man. I, I sometimes I send them kind of early. That's fine. You can send them any time to me. I don't care. I even I, through work I always get a midnight email for some reason. Oh yeah, me too. I'm like, why are y'all sending me midnight emails? Stupid. So I don't care. It, your phone stay in the living room. There you go. So uh, uh, Zach wants to know uh, what we think of the Hudson Nine. Have you, you've seen the Hudson Nine? Wow, I'm making noise. That's okay. Have you seen the Hudson Nine? No. It's it's kind of a it's a it's a semi-auto that's like a 1911 kind of, but it's got a really low uh, bore axis mm-hmm. type deal going on it. And I, you know, honestly, it looks kind of cool. It's really freaking expensive, like $1,400 expensive. Um, and I don't know that I'll ever have one just because of the price. I don't, I could buy three guns for that. Um, but they look good. I've heard good things about them, but honestly, I don't know. Uh, Philip also says, uh, PD-10 sounds like a G19X, single stack, 10 rounds. The G19X isn't a single stack. It's a double stack, and it holds more than 10 rounds. It holds like 20. Good grief. The G19X is a good gun. Have you never shot one, have you? We're going to yeah. have, have to get uh, Eric uh, from, he used to work at Napa, have him come over and bring his 19X. That's a good gun. I know I've asked this every time, but I can't. What's and the I difference? keep asking because I can't remember the answer. Does it still have those crappy sights on them? The Glock? Yeah. Does it have decent sights? I think it, I think they might have upgraded sights on them because they were gonna that, they were turning that into the military or they were okay. trying to. But I really liked it. It's ugly. It looks like baby shit brown, but it's it's ugly. But nice. man, it, it shoots. It's actually I told them it looked like cheap Cadillac gold. It was freaking horrific. That's horrible. It's a horrific color. That's supposed to be their desert sand or That's something. What, yeah, it's it's the slide's kind of gold. I expect it to be kind of a metallic flake <laughs> when I look at it. It looks really crappy. I don't like all those colored guns anyway, man. Just give me a black gun. You don't like colored guns, but you no. like okay. No. <laughs> Just make it black the way it's supposed to be. I don't know. There's some really cool I saw my, I saw one of the PD tens come out in a really awesome looking gray. Yeah. So you know you want a PD-10 now. This is turning into the PD the PD-10 hour. I could get a pink one. You you could probably you could you give me some Krylon, dude. I'll make that sucker whatever <laughs> color whatever color you're feeling that day. We go periwinkle blue for all I care. What's bad is if they come out and the only thing that's there is a pink one. Are you gonna get it? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'll just paint it black or something. It'll give me. I've never customized a gun's color. It'll give me an excuse to go in and do something badass on it. Yeah, I would do something with it. I don't get the. You don't get the bubble gum looking. I don't get it. Make it a Hello Kitty, a Hello Kitty PD10. Well, there was a handgun 
that they were selling for a little while. I don't know if it's still out there that shot a five five six. Right. And it was a small handgun. Right. You know, it's not an AR that they call a handgun. This was a, and it was so ugly. And it. Fit, I thought you had one. Fit hard. It was so god awful trying to hold it. It was just. Did you have one? No. Did you shoot one? No. But it was horrible. It was it was just too bad. If but it was got it if it was a little cheaper, I'd buy it just because of the gimmick factor of right. it. Right. Uh, yeah. Because I buy gimmick guns. Right. I'm like, <laughs> this is crazy. I gotta have it. But <laughs> it was just awful trying to hold this thing, and yeah, just, I just wanted to shoot it. I mean, it was right. A, I don't know if you had an inch of barrel once you put the round in there. It was I think I've, I, oh, I haven't seen that one. I've shot some weird little guns before. I shot one that was real, it was, it was a handgun. It wasn't that little, but it was a handgun chambered in 4570. Good grief. That was a blast, literally. Yeah, yeah, I bet. And I've shot a Derringer chambered, chambered in 45 Long Colt, and it was little, and also a 410 shell. You could shoot a 410 out of right. it. And the 410, there was only like, it was only like half an inch of barrel past the uh, end of that 410 shell. That rocked your freaking world. I almost got one of those. That rocked your world. That's like nothing you've ever. It's like nothing you've ever shot before. Trust me. But really? that was the same day that my buddy had a homemade. <laughs> it was. It was a homemade black powder handgun. It was literally a oh, five a homemade. So if I. <laughs> If I could find pictures, which they're out there, I saw them not too long ago. If I can find them, I'll post them to the Facebook page. Right. I'll send them to you because you don't do social media, which right. we need to talk about. No, I don't do social media. So uh, this guy made one. So he, he he bought it from this. Well, he acquired it from this guy. Okay. Who who made it because the guy was uh, camping one night and he had a bear get into his tent. And I don't know what he had there, but he decided he wants something bigger and more badass yeah yeah so he literally took it was like an old handle it looked like an old uh, i don't think it was like deer antler but it kind of was made to look like a, like an old revolver handle look like right. a deer antler you know that real you know that that shape that they right. have had that and a little bit of the frame and he mounted this freaking barrel on it it's about this long and it's about this big around and the walls were like so freaking thick and he mounted it and he built this like like black powder single shot on this sucker. Good grief. And you'd literally load load the gun and you could jam whatever the hell you I forget the case. It was a ma- it was massive. Like you a blunderbuss. <laughs> yeah, it was. Just put but, nails but in. But in handgun of... form. Uh-huh. And you could dump lead in there, you could dump rocks in there, you could put freaking nails in there. And, and you, you shot this. Yes, numerous times. Wow. And uh Brave the guy man. the guy who who owned it got it from the guy who who created it because the guy it hurt his hand. So the guy that I was who had it when I was shot it said he shot it one time and he did a bunch of leather work and he worked with his hands. That was how he used for his living. Right. And so he refused to shoot it again because it made him bleed. Wow. So we were starting. If and, you're not bleeding, you're not shooting. This thing was nasty. Okay. And so I was like, oh, I want to shoot it. And he's like, okay. And so we. Loaded it once, and he, I forget what the charge was now. I can't even remember anymore. But he loaded it a little bit, and it wasn't even full charge. And bam, you know, it was it was insane. And it went off, and everything was great. And I said, add a little more. He goes, that's that's more knife shot out of it. It made me bleed. <laughs> Your hand was tingling. Trust me. Your hands were tingling. And uh, loaded it a little bit heavier, a little bit more. Bam! Rock my world again. But we're, we're taking... We're, I mean, we're just hammering. I forget what he was putting in there. You're I, going to failure. We, we were, we did actually. <laughs> we, we haven't got to the end of my story yet. Okay. But we were taking chunks out of this freaking like big old ply, piece of plywood. It was awesome. Oof. We did it like, I think I got up to about five or six rounds and uh, we had to quit. And it was to the point, it was starting to get painful, but it was fun to shoot. And we, it was kind of getting to the point where it was scary. I was like, <laughs> And so, uh, so uh, we had to quit because we looked. He was getting ready to reload it. We looked, and it started splitting the screws. Wow! Yeah, so we had to quit and put it away. And now I'm not really friends with that guy anymore. So I didn't get a chance to shoot it after. I don't even know if he's fixed it, but it was a lot of fun. But I've got I've got video or pictures or something of it. 
and the the barrel on the thing is a freaking amazing. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just a pipe is all it is. When we were kids, we uh, we were gonna make a fifty cal single shot. Uh, we would oh, probably kids. blown ourselves up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We was kids. We was you know thirteen, right? And we acquired a ammo can full of fifty cal tracers. Oh, I acquired. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. We acquired it. We acquired that and some uh, a couple of belts of M sixty rounds. So we were gonna, oh, yeah. We we were gonna make a single shot, fifty cal, go <laughs> gator hunting. Oh man, we would have blown ourselves up. So how far did you get? Not too far. We was taking them apart and dumping the the powder out of them, which is pellets. And yeah, we were gonna try and make hand grenades out of that too. The we didn't go too far. You just did you guys start lighting the powder on fire? That's fun. Yeah, yeah, we did that. Blew off all my eyebrows and. Threw me in a ditch, and that was the end of our, uh, let's stop before we kill ourselves. And then we talked to people that had some sense, and they're like, don't set off that 50 cal round. <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't have anything that's going to contain that. Yeah. It's going to blow up on you. So we stopped. Well, I remember when I was a kid, you know, I wanted guns, and there's this real the kid that lived down the street, and he was, he was the brain of the operation. Uh-huh. A really intelligent kid. I don't know if he listens to listens to this but his name is uh his name is blaine Jemmett. okay and i he's on my facebook page every, i i hear from him every now and then he works for like one of these computer places and they fly him over to like abu dhabi and all these yeah he's insanely smart and uh so he was the brains of this but he's going to abu dhabi well but i mean he oh i'm just saying, saying they send him everywhere yeah, I like you, i got you yeah it was just a little shot at abu dhabi yeah i know but he um he came up. We, we we did our research. That's back when you used, you know, encyclopedias. Yeah. And uh, we found out. Uh, I don't even know. I don't even know if it was John Moses, John Browning's. I don't know if it was his plans or what. But we were going to build ourselves a freaking gun. We okay. were too young to buy him. We didn't have it. We were going <laughs> to damn it. We were going to build ourselves one. And uh, I was at home doing my part of the research. I had the encyclopedias opened up, and I was drawing some shit out on some paper, and it was just spread out all over the table. And uh, it's bedtime. I had to go to bed, so I left all my crap out there. R- <laughs> rookie move. My dad saw it. <laughs> my dad saw it later on that night and then uh, uh, really sternly informed me the next day that I wasn't to be uh, trying to manufacture my own firearm. And then, not in our group, but some other kid that we kind of knew about three weeks later, found some hunting grounds, put them in a vice, and set them off with a nail and a hammer. So, nice. so that went really that went over really well, but that kind of scared us enough that we kind of put the uh, gun building plans on hold. Yeah, I saw a kid doing that, holding it in his hand. Oh, hitting the hitting the round, trying bam, to make it yeah bam. go off. Hey, hitting it with a hammer. I'm like, you dummy! What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, kids don't kids don't think though. That's no. the, that's the thing. But well, I God, I think we're almost done here. I'm about ready to. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm having trouble breathing and talking at the same time over here. You don't have to do them both. You know, you don't have to. So hopefully, I mean, hell, I kind of like this fun, just you and me. Hopefully, uh, one of these days I'll get enough money and I'll figure out the uh, tech side of this thing and our Facebook Live videos will sound good. I know the audio sucks. Yeah, and, when we get to Alaska. Yeah, when we get to Alaska. I've been looking up at Alaska. You know, it's so cold that some people have dry houses. I'm gonna with t- no plumbing. I'm gonna tell you right now that the place where I talked about buying that couple acres from that guy, right? He told he he felt bad at, at church. I was talking to him, and he goes, uh, first we need to go up and visit it, like twice, two times. Send during, me a picture dude. during the year." <laughs> but he goes, he goes, you do know I'm probably seeing you like the coldest place in Alaska, right? <laughs> he says it's great in the summertime, but in the wintertime, I was like poking around on which is eight months of the year. Yeah, I was po- I was poking around on online a little bit, right? And there's pictures of the uh, thermometers like the outside, like the banks and stuff, like 45 below. Good grief! So you ready for that, Tarver? I don't know. We won't know till we do it. We do the podcast with the damn caribou. Then when you have dry houses where you don't intentionally don't put plumbing in because there's right. no way to save your pipes, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. That's why they have to have your water shipped in. I'm like, hmm. That's why you buy five-gallon Home Depot buckets. I guess. I don't know how they do it. But I'm like, 
Wow. I can crap in a bucket. I'm good, dude. Hey, dude, I just went on a freaking 50K run. I can drop trowel in the woods with people running by me and do my business. I have no bro- I got no problem. I wouldn't go outside and do it. It's good. <laughs> Sorry, folks. Got- <laughs> we'll pause the podcast. <laughs> we, you know what? We could just go while we're doing the podcast. Yeah, turn the camera off. <laughs> right, there, right there on the bucket. Anyhow, we don't need to get into that tonight. Yeah, that's kind of a strange area we're going It is kind of a strange area. So hopefully I can get some money and I can throw some money at this and buy a nice board and we can make this everything sound a little bit better. So share the podcast with your friends if you like it. Uh, subscribe to it. Put out a review. Where You can find us on iTunes. You can find us on Spotify. You can find us on almost... Um, you can find us... On almost any podcatcher app out there, really, at this point, I uh, I did upgrade. We are on quite a few more now, so oh wow, we'll uh, we'll see what happens. But can you read that? If you want to call us, we haven't had someone call in for quite a while. I'm looking at you, Zane. You said you're going to call in. I haven't heard from you yet. Can you read the podcast hotline? The podcast hotline is two zero eight area code two zero eight six nine six four three nine seven. One more time. Area code 208-696-4397. Okay, give us a call there. Let us know where you're calling from. Let us uh, say hi. Leave us a story, a self-defense story. Maybe you have a question, whatever you want. Leave it. We will you, uh, We will get it, and we will take care of it on the next episode. And hopefully that next one will be, I think, this coming weekend. Okay, and uh, I don't know. I don't know, Kevin. I don't know. We'll see how your accounts, how your work, is your day job's looking before we promise you coming back. It's getting easier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you kind of freed up a day or two, didn't <laughs> yeah, you? Yeah, I did. So anyhow, we will see you guys next week. Um, share it with your friends. Uh, friends, find us on Facebook. Talk to you later. Bye. <laughs>